In this video, I'm going to share with you three tips for working with CSV files in SnapLogic. We're going to look at how we pull files that are uh, sitting in a directory. We're going to look at how to process file names and have them available throughout your pipeline. And we're also going to look at how we flatten data so we can get it down into a CSV format. So let's get started. So let's start out by taking a quick look at what we're trying to achieve. As you can see, we have this CSV source directory, which has got these five CSV files in there, which are invoices from various different batches. Each of these files contains records from different suppliers. So when we transfer these files into our CSV target directory, what we're going to do is to um, split out the batches so that we've got individual files per supplier. So the first thing we need to know in order to process these CSV files is how do we actually pull a remote folder in order to, to pick up whatever files are there for us. And we do this with our file polar snap. Uh, this is found in the binary snap pack. And what it allows us to do is to pull a specific directory. In this case, it's my SFTP directory and to specify a kind of file that we want to look for. So I'm saying look for the CSV files here. You'll note that you'll need an account if we're going to be using um, uh, an SFTP directory. Uh, whatever type of directory you're using, typically you'll need to specify an account. We also have a couple of key values in here which should be set. The first is the polling interval in seconds. Okay, and this is how frequently do we go and look at this folder uh, if we're waiting for files to arrive. And the next one is the polling timeout. I've changed this to just 10 seconds because my files are there. I'm not waiting for more files to appear. So I'm saying give this 10 seconds, pull it every two seconds to make sure everything's there. And um, once we've got that, we'll actually have all of those files available that we can then start uh, processing. So the next thing we need to do is to actually read the file itself. So in this case, we're going to use a file reader. And the first thing I need to do is to give it an input view. By default, it doesn't have an input view. Let me just close that for a second. We'll add that on here. Now it's telling me it needs a property value. We're actually passing that across from the file polar. What it is, is the path here. Now we will also need to give it our account so that it can read. And now this is going to go through and pull our CSV files. So you can see our Iris AI here is um, suggesting that I might want the CSV parser at this point. So let me add this on. And from that, um, we should be able to start processing it. So if I save this pipeline and let it validate, bear in mind I want to save it with some version of the file name, which we got from the file polar, we used it in the file reader, then passed it through to the CSV parser. And now let's see what information we've got to work with here. If I look at this in JSON format, you can see that I've got the record. First of all, you can see that it's actually um, pipe delimited, not comma delimited. We can fix that. But the important thing to note here is that we've actually lost the path information. So that path information was available right here when we needed it for the file reader. By the time we've passed the data from the file into the CSV parser, that information has gone. So clearly, this isn't the way to process the file names. So let's take a look at this. So we know we've got the, the paths which include the file names as an output from this file polar. Okay, we have the complete path available. 
we can see everything that we need there. So we need a way of being able to uh, preserve that uh, and then actually work with that further. So I've got a pipeline here which processes the files. It does the file read, it does the, um, the passing. We then sort it by supplier and invoice ID and then we group it by the supplier. So we're achieving everything we were looking to do. The only difference here is we don't have the path to work with. What I do have though is um, a parameter in my pipeline called file path. And I've got a default value in here so I've got something to work to. But if I come back to this poll CSV, I can actually come down to my flow snap pack where we have a pipeline execute. If I add that pipeline execute on here, okay, I'm just going to save it so that we get the data available. Okay, there's no pipeline in there yet. I'm going to select from this It's called process CSV file. Now, this actually takes a parameter, which we just saw. That parameter is file path. And what I'm going to pass into that is the path from my file polar. So what happens here is it does exactly what we just saw. We pull the directory, we get the list of CSV files that we want to process. We then call the pipeline that will do the processing and pass in that path as a pipeline parameter. What that means is that parameter is available across the board. And that me this means that we can use it at any point. Now, what I'm going to do here I have this write CSV, and I've actually got two things in here. I've got the file path, and I've got a supplier name that's been passed in. Now, if we come back here, as we saw a moment ago, we've actually, um, we're actually extracting that supplier field. So what we can do is we can call this pipeline execute, as has been suggested by the Iris AI. We can select the pipeline that we're interested in, which is write CSV. And we actually have two parameters, remember? The first one here is the file path. The second one, the supplier. File path is what we had as the pipeline parameter. And the supplier in this case is this group by object. Okay, and we can see a preview of it just there. The other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this execution label. And this execution label is useful for when we look into the logs so that we can see exactly what is being called. And I'm going to say we're processing this batch A file or whichever file is being passed in. Save this. And close it. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to extract this file name at our final step here. So now that we're in the write CSV pipeline, um, you can see I've validated it and it's saying this isn't valid. That's because we haven't yet got a file name. I'll just validate here that I have an account. Okay, my SFTP account. Now for the file name, you can see that I've got it selected to use an expression rather than a string, which means I can go into the expression builder. The first thing that I'm going to use is simply a string. Okay, so the first thing that I need in here is the actual path that I want to write to. Okay, that's hard coded. Everything's going into that CSV target. The next thing I want is the supplier name. 
And I can get that by simply adding in supply name. Then I want to add onto that an underscore. Now I want the rest of the file name. This is interesting. So I can add on a path that was um, sent in as a pipeline parameter. But as you can see, that doesn't work. I just need that last portion of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually split this path down. And I do that using, if we scroll down here, the split function. Now the split function will break something down based on um, whatever character you specify. So I'm going to specify this slash character. And what this has done is it's actually returned an array. If we just open this out, we can see that this array has been made up of SFTP, nothing, IP address, folder, folder, and file name. Uh, that has essentially been arranged just like a stack. Let me show you what I mean. We start out with the name or the path um, taking us directly to that CSV file. What we're going to do then is we're going to split it out by, um, by those slashes. Okay, so now we have the individual er elements. First one is SFTP, that gets pushed into the stack. The next one is blank. There's two slashes in there, so it's that nothingness between those two slashes. Next we have the IP address. We have the parent folder. We have the folder that we're actually working with. Finally, we have the file name itself. Now in the context of a traditional stack, you would get the most recent um, value by using a function called pop. So if I pop this, I would actually get that um, file name returned out. So let's have a look what happens if we do the same thing here. You can see in my array here, I have this pop function. If I do that, suddenly our file or our path is exactly what we're looking for. So it's as simple as that. To get a file name out of a path, you take the path, you split it on the separator, and then you just pop the last value from that. So we have our data now, and we want to actually put it into CSV format. Now, within SnapLogic, when we're moving data around, it's always being passed as JSON objects. So what I've done here is I've added a JSON generator. This is so that I can test this pipeline in isolation without having to call that entire stack of the three pipelines together. Within this, I'm able to specify what's my JSON actually going to look like. And if you're wondering where I got this from, I simply went here, went to the group by fields, Okay, so I've got my, my output here. And you can download that JSON file. So I did that. I got my JSON generator. Now what I need to do is I want to ma um, push that out into a CSV file. And if I do that, if I put it in here and let this validate, you're going to see that it doesn't work telling me that there's a problem in my CSV, and this is a really common issue that you'll see. It says it can't format the CSV data um, because it needs a flattened map data. Okay, What it's actually got is effectively JSON. So you need to be able to flatten this data before we can go any further. 
So the way we do that, we disconnect the JSON generator. And what we want to do is we want to add a JSON splitter. What this does, it takes this JSON data that we're working with and it gives us an option to split it out based on any level within the schema. So what we're going to do, if we look at this, you can see we've got the master group and then we've got the group by, and then we've got all of these objects which contain the actual data. That's what I'm going to select here. And once this validates, what we'll see here is the table of, of the information that we actually want to save out. So once we've got to this point now, all we need to do is um, to take this JSON generator off. I'm going to leave it here though in case I want to do some more testing. I'm simply going to disable it. So now we're going to work with whatever data gets passed in. So let's go back to that original pipeline. Let's execute this. Remember, we're waiting for that 10 seconds to pull the folder. Once we've got all of the paths that need executing, the file polar turns green and we pass the execution off to the other pipeline. And there we have it. And if we bring up the SFTP again, you see now in there we have, for every supplier, we have um, the five batches. So let's just quickly recap what we did there. We pulled the files using a file polar. And this is something that you can use in all kinds of situations. It's hugely powerful. We then processed out the file names by using a pipeline execute so that we could pass those paths through and make them available throughout the entirety of the sub pipelines. We then used the, um, the split and the pop to get just the file name from the path. And then finally, we used the JSON splitter to be able to flatten the data before it was written out to the CSV file. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'm John Landells for SnapLogic, and I'll see you in the next video.